Hello and welcome, this is the project you'll have at the end of this tutorial. It will be up on GitHub and you'll find the link in the description below. So as you can see we've got hair colour, top colour and bottom colour. You can change all three of them and they'll react. There's no saving at the moment, it's just going to be a very simple shader. So let's get into it. This is the art I'll be using for the project and I'll leave a link in the description below. Due to the shader being really simple, there's a bit of a workaround we have to do on our current sprites. So we, this wouldn't work because there's an issue with floating point errors, so we have to use certain colours. Once we set that up, we'll be able to change the colour to whichever colour we wish. That'll be easy to explain once we do the shader code. So let's set it up. So what I want you to do is I want you to go to your RGBs and make sure that 25500 is your first colour. And if you make sure that continues is turned off, we press F for fill and you fill in whichever colors you wish. So now we know that red is going to be our first color. Now the top color, just go to RGB again and we could just put 255 in again and we'll use this color. And for our third color, we're going to go to here, we're going to go 0 and 255 for magenta and we'll color the pants. So now you can see we've got our three colors and this will be recognized by the shader, we won't have any floating point errors and once again it will be explained when we do the shader which we're going to do next. Make a new project, we're going to have a no 2D, what I've done is I've moved over the art we just made into this art folder. Uh, one thing we're going to do is go to the animated sprite, we're going to go to the frame, then we're going to add the animation. We're going to go to the sprite frames over here, find our art, open it, and I know this is going to be 6 by one Select all of them. As you can see they're quite blurry so we're going to resolve that now. If you go to import while this is selected, go to your preset and go to 2D pixel. Re-import and as you can see it's more sharp. If you don't do that step this won't work so make sure that you do do it. Now let's position our sprite somewhere we can actually see it and we'll make it bigger too. I'm going to make mine 9x9 nine nine. and let's position it over here. Now I'm going to add three colour picker buttons. So right click on your node 2D, add child node color picker button stretch it out of how big you want it position highlight it press ctrl d to make a copy drag that down press ctrl d again i'm just going to add in three labels to describe which the color matches which top hair and bottom once that's finished we're going to add in our shader now so select your animated sprite we're going to go down to the material we're going to click this we're going to make sure it's a new shader material once that's done, click the sphere, go to the shader, put a new shader in, double click that, and we're going to put in some variables, which is a 2D shader. You've got to make sure that the shader type is canvas item. Next, we're going to define six variables, and this is going to contain our old color. So this is the colors we're going to swap, and the new colors are the colors we're going to swap to. If you go to your shader param, you can see they're in here. Next, I'm going to add in the fragment void. Fragment will loop through every single pixel on your sprite and that means that you could detect what pixel you currently have, check if it's one of the old colours and if it is then swap it to the new colour. So what this line of code does is we get our current pixel that we're working with, then we have three ifs, so you can see that if our colour is equal to the old colour 1 we swap it with the new colour 1, if it's equal to the old colour 2 new colour 2 etc. However if it doesn't find any of the old colours then we don't want to really swap it so what we'll do is make sure that our color pixel remains its original value and really is as simple as that so i was getting floating point errors when i was checking a current color versus a color say um, like an off shade of yellow and the purpose was when it was passing it into here we was getting really long floating point numbers and when that happens it's susceptible to getting errors so there is other ways around it, but the code becomes exceptionally more complex and I wouldn't feel comfortable trying to teach something that I don't really understand that well myself. However, if someone does know a way around it in a simple way, please let me know in the comments. I'd be happy to see it. So now we're doing the shader, let's set it up. So you'll see that we've got the old colors. So we're gonna make sure that these colors match these. And to do that, it's quite easy. You just go to old color one, which is the hair. Make sure you click this color picker here. And click the hair. You'll notice it should turn black because obviously the new color is black. Let's go and do the same to the top and the bottom. Now you'll notice the top has not gone black and there must be a reason for that. Ah, here. 
So make, if you do that, it's probably because of one of these lines. So if you get rid of that, this should work now. There we go. Now you'll notice if we go to these new colors, we can just change them to whatever we want. Now currently these color pick buttons aren't actually connected to this shader to make these move, so nothing's going to happen. However, it'd be nice to start up the application with these matching these colors. Let's do that now. So you go to the colors, pick the hair, pick the top, and pick the jeans. Now we need to add in a script to the animated sprite, so let's do that now. I'm putting mine in my scripts folder and create it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use signals when the color picker changes we'll know to update the shader. So let's do that now. So let's click the color button, go to the node to make sure you've got the color change selected, double click that, make sure it's on the animate sprite, connect and do that two more times. Now I'm going to remove this because we won't be needing it. So I'm going to copy and paste this code and explain it. So if I go to here, you'll notice on the very first one, which is the hair, we're going to make sure it's new color one, which matches this pram here. So what's happening is we're getting the material of the animated sprite and we're going to set a value, which is in the shader. So we get the shade pram and then when we're in the shade params, we're going to get the new color one and we're going to set it to the color of the color picker, which is here. And we'll do that two more times. Now when doing this, make sure that you update the one to a two and update it to a three on here. We want to save that. So now that's done, we can go to animate sprite and we can make sure that it's actually playing. As you see, it's a little bit slow and I want to be a little bit quicker than that. So we're going to go to the sprite frames and we're going to change this to say eight. That looks a little bit better. Now let's make sure everything's working. So I'm going to play this. And I should be able to change the color of the hair, brilliant. Color of the top, let's make it a bit of a green. And let's make the trousers uh, jeans. As you can see, we've got a working shader. Now, one thing you could do with this is you could save these colors into a dictionary and you could then load them back up later. So it's sort of like a create a character mode. So I'd like to thank you for stopping by and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.